Hi, it's Richard from Original Outdoors. This is episode four of the UK Airgun Basics series. So in this series, we're looking at the owning and buying and keeping and shooting of air guns in the UK. This is based around our work with foraging courses and it's designed to supplement that, but it's of wider interest to anyone using or shooting or choosing an air gun in the UK. So you, if you've been following the series, you're probably hoping I'm actually going to get out and shoot something soon. And yes, we will be in the next few episodes, but there's one thing we need to cover first, and that's the law. So we have got other videos that we shot with Tony in the last couple of years talking about air gun law, and I don't want to overlap too much with them, but there, is, there are a few points we haven't covered yet, and just some things we need to make absolutely clear. Because I know this isn't the most interesting of subjects, but you, there may come a day when you're stood in front of a police officer or in court where actually understanding the law would suddenly become much more interesting to you. So I must preface this by saying that neither of us are police officers. We don't work, we don't work for the CPS or the Procurator of Fiscal Law. We're not solicitors. We don't have any standing within the law other than being members of the shooting community. So everything we say in this video is backed up by our own experience and understanding of the law. However, I strongly urge you to go and research it for yourself. There are links below this video taking you to the Basque website and to other websites that can tell you everything in more detail and quote verbatim the law. But for now, I'm just going to whisk away and go from me standing in a wood, travel back in time a couple of months to me standing in the shop with Tony and I've just asked him a question about air gun law in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. We, I want to ask you, what what's the score mm, with the score? air rifle law in the UK? Because it's not the same everywhere, is it? No, it's not. Uh, both Northern Ireland and Scotland do have a slightly different set of rules. So as far as England and Wales are concerned, um, you need to be aged over 18 mm -hmm. to purchase and use an air rifle. Um, you can have an air rifle as a younger person, but you must be supervised at all times. Mm. Um, in Scotland, they do have air, an air rifle only version of a firearm certificate mm. uh, currently, um, which uh, you have to apply to the Scottish Police Forces for. Mm -hmm. In Northern Ireland, uh, they have their air rifles on a full firearm certificate and air pistols are not allowed in Northern Ireland. And in, the U and in England and Wales, there are still that air rifle without a license still comes up to 12 foot pound. 12 foot pound, that's yeah. correct, for a rifle and 6 foot pound for an air pistol. Because there are much higher powered firearm certificate rated air rifles. Yes, yes. there is no grey area between FAC and non-FAC. 12 foot pound is the maximum, 12.1 is FAC. Okay, so with that, so we, we covered in the first episode the thing about taking it home and it miss, if it's in a public place it must remain covered. Uh, you, if you're transporting it, you must keep the ammunition, the pellets, uh, as far away from the uh, mechanism of the the rifle as you, as you yep. can. So, yep. gun covered in the boot, pellets in the glove box, the glove or box. somewhere yep. like that. Um, is that's obviously not practical when you're out shooting? No, no, that's it. It's 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 a matter of if you have the two together, make sure you have a good reason for having the two together. Obviously, if you're crossing a field mm -hmm. to get to a hide yeah. um, and you've got the pellets in your pocket or even in the, in the pocket of your gun bag, I'm quite sure that would be perfectly fine. Mm. Obviously, if you do get stopped by um, uh, the police at the time, it's up to you to explain to them exactly why you have the two together at the same time. But let, let's be honest, it's practical. So, in my personal case, I have some land which is my own, I have uh, land which I rent for uh, running some of the courses, and then I have shooting permission on friends and neighbours and other contacts, farmland and yep. in their places. So, yep. for my own land, I don't need written permission. No, that's no all, that's it, for land you own. No, yep. it's, it's exactly the same as somebody using their back garden. For a bit of shooting practice. But if you're a tenant, it is worth checking with your landlord. Worth checking with your landlord that they're happy for you to do it, yes. Yeah. And if it's land that you rent for other purposes that you don't live on, yep. then unless it is specifically listed in the lease, you need to get written permission written from the permission landlord. Again. Yeah, that's correct. And for everything else, where it's friends or other contacts shooting permission, you must have written permission. The clues yeah. on the name. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. And the advice I was given when I started shooting years ago was always to. 
have either the original document or at least a copy, a copy of, it of it with you at all times on yep. your person yeah, yeah, with absolutely. the contact details of the landowner absolutely because the police have got a lot to if they're called to a suspicious person wandering around the fields yep. behind the village with a gun uh, they will respond as if it is a full firearms incident yep, that's correct and they have to that's yes. the thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. they don't know it might just be the <sighs> To take it to the very furthest degree, it might be the start of a mass shooter in incident. Yeah, yeah, this is the thing, you never know. As has happened in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, it. you never know. It's You can understand why there is what can seem like a disproportionate response to an air rifle, but because it's no, they're not responding to an air rifle, they're responding to what possibly could be the next. They are <laughs> simply responding to a weapon. Yeah. So, with that reason, if you have the shooting permission on your person, you have, you have made your life and their job a lot easier yeah, that's because right. they can verify there and then that you have permission to that's shoot it. on that you land. Have permission there. You have the contact details with the person who owns the land so if the police want to they can ring them up, give them your name, the landowner says yes he's allowed to be there, they will undoubtedly shake your hand, wish you a good evening and walk away. Yeah. And the opposite of that is on trespass because if you are on land we do not have permission to shoot even if you have permission to walk across there. Yeah. If you don't, do not have specific permission to shoot, that's correct. It's then armed trespass. It's armed yeah. trespass, which is yeah. Even if the pellet you're firing leaves the confines of the land where you have permission and enters somebody else's land, that is still also counted as armed trespass. Yeah, because it's that very interesting thing. If your quarry, or even if you're target shooting, if it's whatever it is you're shooting at legally on the land you have permission to shoot at, if that land is the board is a border with another land, it's a fence line or a hedgerow yeah. or something like that. Yeah. If your projectile leaves your the land you have permission That's to correct. shoot, it becomes yeah, armed trespass. It becomes armed trespass, yes. Which currently is a mandatory seven year sentence. Yeah. So it's and it's no you can't it's not something you can talk your way out of on the day, really. It's no. it's uh, no. it becomes armed trespass. It's, it's a big problem. It's pretty much indefensible. Yeah. So and that doesn't it's only an air rifle, doesn't count. It's still no. No. shotgun, anything. It could this be. is it. If you break the law with an air rifle, you are treated exactly the same as if you broke the law using an M16. It matters not. In no. the eyes of the law, it's the same offence. Yeah. So it's you can get yourself into a lot of trouble very, very quickly in a very short period of time. Incredibly so, yes. Yeah. And so on those la those pieces of land where I have shooting permission in one degree or another, where I have re lit written legal permission, there are. <laughs> There's also the issue of public rights of way and members of the public and public spaces within that land. That's right, yes. You, you can't take a shot in the direction of a public footpath or public highway if it interferes with a person using that public highway. Yeah, so it's if some you have to be aware of where the public rights of way are on your land. Yeah. There's also the outside of the linear public rights of way, the footpaths, the bridleways and that kind of thing. Uh, as well as main roads and public roads, Absolutely. There are, there's also something called the Countryside Right of Way Act, which is commonly called the Right to Roam. It applies to England and Wales, uh, but that brings some of the rights of passage um, from footpaths and rights of way to open areas. So it could be a woodland, it could be areas of upland fields, where at any point someone could legally wander into view <laughs> into your scope, into your sights, anywhere on that property, day or night. It, yeah, that's it. There's no. Always be aware of your surroundings. In, yeah. in a hunting situation, you're you're trying to be stealthy. You're trying to be quiet. If you hear something that is unusual, presume it's a person and stop. Yeah, that's it. And then there's also, as you said, a hunting situation where chances are you've been dark, drab yeah. clothing, yeah. camo. Yeah. With a gun, if somebody's yep. not familiar with air rifles and yep. firearms, that's then... it. Always bear in mind you are going to appear slightly scary to the person who's walking their dog. Yeah, so it's you, you're possibly going to blow whatever stalking you're undertaking at the moment. Yep. But absolutely, gun down. If you've got if you've got a balaclava on or yep. a face take tail, take it on, off. Take it off. Take a look. Can yep. I say hello and explain what you're yep. doing? Yeah. Yeah. Explain you have permission to be there. Explain exactly what you're doing. Yeah. S sorry for scaring them. Yeah. yeah, have a nice day. But also be very aware of what's happening with your body language. Yeah, non-aggressive. The, the rifle, the weapon, everything, if you... Yeah, it's... Yeah. just put it down. Put it down. Put it you down. don't need to be holding it like that whilst talking to somebody. That's... Nope. That could be quite aggressive. Yeah, it can <laughs> be threatening. Just put it down, take your head cover off, go and speak to the people. You might destroy your hunting for the next two hours, but at least you've still got your permission. Yeah, and... At the, I mean, in those cases, if there's a complaint to the police or... 
even if you have got written permission to be there, as we discussed, if you're if the person is alarmed or distressed by you and they have the legal right to be there, or in fact, to be honest, if they don't have the legal right to be there, no. the onus is still on you. Yeah, you, you, you've got to prove your ability to do what you want to do safely. Yeah, and this is, and no doubt this is going to come in the comments below this, because it always comes up every time we mention anything around um, armed laws and knives and firearms and that kind of thing in the UK. There's a lot of debate, and look down below in the comments, you'll probably see some. There's a whole legal industry that, with a lot of people, make a lot of money discussing this in court. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. if you want to see that firsthand, then just ignore some of these these things yeah. we said in this video. It's it's basic common sense. I mean, we're not lawyers. We don't pretend to be lawyers. No. I'm I'm incapable of defending somebody in a court of law. It's common sense stuff. Don't yeah. be threatening. Stay neutral. Be welcoming. But also, just because you haven't heard of the incident where one of the things we said about armed trespass or um, an incident with a member of the public, if you, you say it's never happened to you and you don't know anyone it has happened to, then it doesn't take much research online to find a case where someone did. Yeah. I know at least one person who had to, who well, they ended up with a criminal record for having a knife in their rucksack on a train. Yeah. Uh, these things in the wrong environment, with the wrong situation, with the wrong attitude, can quickly become a very, very serious incident. So it is down to you, as the air gun user, that to make sure that you are operating safely and legally at all times. Anything outside of that, you're going to get yourself in big trouble straight away. And there's anything to add to that? No, that's it. It's, it's basic common sense. Use your smarts. Keep it safe. Yeah, so legal shooting permission, written permission, safe use and transport of the air weapon, including making sure it's covered when it's not in use, keeping ammunition separate. Correct. Um, all of this should be as important to you as your zeroing or your choice of, of rifle. It's not sexy or interesting, but if it goes wrong, it'll suddenly become yeah. very, very interesting to you. Yeah. Best case scenario, you'll lose your rifle and potentially lose your shooting permission. Worst case scenario, you'll spend a few years at a Majesty's Pleasure. Yeah, it's as easy as that. So, so there we go. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's not the most interesting of subjects for everybody, but it's something that if you are part of the shooting community in the UK or anywhere else in the world, you need to be aware of the laws around shooting and owning rifles and weapons in that country. There's no such thing as it's only an air rifle. There are laws specific to air rifles in the UK. There are laws generally covering shooting and shooting on land and shooting for targets or shooting for the pot or shooting for pest control or whatever it is you're shooting for. There are laws governing all of those things. So it is down to you as the owner of the air rifle and the person using it to make sure that the rifle you own is legal and safe, that you're storing it and transporting it in a safe and appropriate and legal manner, and that the places you're shooting, you can also do so in a safe, appropriate and legal manner. So you need to have written shooting permission for land that is not yours to shoot on. It needs to be appropriate to shoot on as well. If you're shooting in your back garden, you need to be aware of what's going to happen to that pellet. If it misses a target or goes through it or goes through the backstop, even though it's your land and it's your short back garden, is it still appropriate and safe to be shooting there? So you need to take all these things into consideration and make your own decisions. You also need to make sure that you do your own research and make sure that you're not applying laws from one country within the UK to another. So you're not watching a video whilst in Scotland about owning an air rifle from England or from 10 years ago before the uh, laws around owning an air rifle in Scotland changed. It's down to you as the owner of the air rifle and the keeper of the air rifle to make sure that you understand these things. Once you understand it and you make sure that you're doing it safely and legally, you can also shoot in a relaxed way because you can be confident that everything you're doing, you're doing legally and responsibly. And that if there is a problem, if for some reason some person here calls the police and say there's a large bearded man wandering around the woods with a scary looking black rifle, the police aren't going to say, oh, it's probably an air rifle. They're probably going to respond in some form. But I can then, when they arrive here, I can say, yep, this is an air rifle. It's made safe. I'm going to put it down now. If you can see that it's safe, I'm now going to go out and get my shooting permission, which is in my back pocket here, to say that I have 
permission, written permission to be on this land and shoot with an air rifle. Even now with an unloaded air rifle, even though a rifle and a gun is never unloaded, you can always assume that it is loaded until definitely no otherwise. I'm here filming, I'm not going to be shooting today, I'm only up here with the gun for the purposes of shoot, uh, filming this video, but I still have my written shooting permission in my pocket there. So I have taken reasonable steps, possibly slightly paranoid steps, but to, for my mind, and I would counsel anyone else to look at it in this way as well, is there a way you can be too careful with this? Because it only takes one incident, one misunderstanding for you to end up in a lot of trouble. We are in a slightly strange position at the moment in the UK with regards to attitudes around shooting. There is a consultation at the moment about whether we, the laws in the UK and England and Wales specifically change around the ownership of air rifles. That has mostly been brought about by the the poor behaviour and the despicable behaviour of a tiny minority, but that reflects badly on the rest of the shooting community. So if you're owning a right if you own a rifle you are part of that shooting community even if you don't engage with anyone else within that community you're there you're part of it as you, you can't escape that so your behavior reflects on the rest of us the last thing i want to say is that there is a community out there and i do encourage you to engage with it you can find people via your local air gun shop like tony's camo in salt league and go there and you can find people there you can look up air gun clubs. Facebook and the internet has made this so much easier now to engage and to find people in your area and find places where for a small fee you can shoot and you can shoot at ranges and you can shoot in competitions and get involved in all sorts of things. So if you want to do this as a sport, as an activity beyond what I tend to do which is shooting for the pot and shooting for foraging and to, to hunt, to eat, then there's a community out there that you can engage with. So that's it. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at moving from the shooting range and shooting indoors and that they're taking those first shots to shooting out here, shooting in the woods, shooting in the great outdoors and the challenges and opportunities that affords. We'll also be looking at shooting permissions and how to find somewhere to shoot where you can do so legally, safely and responsibly. So thank you for watching. I should say at this point that these videos have been supported by Tony from Tony's Camo. You can find contact details at the end of this video and underneath the video as, as well. I urge you to go and have a look at their website or just pop into the shop if you're going past. Tony's a great guy. He's got a fantastic selection of, of air rifles there and, and other air rifle and air gun accessories. There's a lot to look at and even if you don't need to buy anything at the moment, just pop in and go and talk to him because he's a great guy and he knows a lot of, <laughs> he knows a hell of a lot about this subject much more than we can get into these videos so thank you for watching and i'll see you again next time